Hello! So I'm here today to tell a fairy tale which I have found on either the internet, read in a book, or heard from someone else. Now if you've watched my other videos that I've been doing, um, you'll know that I tell fairy tales or stories that I, I can remember or that I've found uh, throughout my life, and then I put those videos on the internet for people to either enjoy or laugh at or something. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so today I'm here to tell another fairy tale, and it is another Grimm's fairy tale, but I still think that it's still worth sharing. So today's fairy tale is known as The Three Children of Fortune. Um, now, I think there is something that I want to mention about this story. Um, has there ever been like a time where there's been a new trend starting or new technology uh, <laughs> that someone's received and unfortunately no one has enough knowledge about it um, to make it go smoothly and it actually this this newness backfires terribly um, yeah that's kind of what happens in this story anyway um, <laughs> food for thought I guess uh, so I'll get right into telling the story now. The Three Children of Fortune. I hope you enjoy. Once upon a time, there was a father who had three sons. Now, as his father was getting older, he decided, you know what, it's time to divide up the inheritance because I'm gonna... I'm not long for this world. So he called his three children to his side and said, Kids, let's face it, I'm going to die soon. So now I'm gonna give you in your inheritance. To the amount of my eldest, I give this rooster. To the second middle child, I give this scythe. And to my third and youngest child, I give this cat. And then he dies. Um, now, the three brothers are just, um, after the father is passed away and buried, um, they're sitting around and they're trying to figure out what it is that they can do with these uh, three gifts that they've been given. Um, now the first one decides, alright, I'm not gonna sit around here. I'm gonna go out into this world and see what I can do. Um, so he does. He takes his rooster and just leaves wherever it is that they live, and he wanders around the country and is having such difficulty in finding out where he can get, get, get rid of this rooster, because he doesn't want it and he's hoping to, just to make some profit on it. Well... He ends up going to a either isolated area or island um, that has, has never seen a rooster, and they also have an issue with telling time, which of course roosters can kind of like mark the hours throughout the day for them. Um, and th and they, they're amazed by this because this is really helpful to them. Um, so the eldest is kind of picking up on this niche market. Um, and he's he's giving a demonstration as to how this this rooster works. He can tell time. He can predict the weather. I don't know. He he gives a bunch of examples as to how this uh, rooster is useful. And the people are so amazed. Uh, they they get their king, and they give him um they give him a donkey loaded with gold. Um, so it's great for for the first son. He goes back home and shows his uh, brothers what what's happened uh, and his fortune. And the second one decides, man, you know, if my brother can go out into the world and make money off of that rooster, then I can go out and make money on my scythe. So he goes out into the world and he also has a little, lot of difficulty because no one wants a scythe. They all have their own. That is until he finds another niche market in another isolated uh, area of the world um, who are a bunch of farmers and they unfortunately have to rip up the crops with their hands. That takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and it's not very efficient. So he somehow manages to uh, come to this place and he shows them how wonderful the scythe is because they can just chop it down chop down the uh, crops, and they're all amazed, and that is one quick sale, uh, because he shows them how to use it, and they give him a horse load of, uh, of gold, um, and, and whatever other precious money, um, 
Now the second son goes home and shows his brothers what it is that he made out of his out of his uh, gift. And so the third uh, son just is like, okay, if my brothers can do it, I can do it too, and I can do it better. So he goes out into the world with his cat. Um, and unfortunately at this time there's almost a cat problem. No one wants a cat because uh, some cats are even being drowned because that's just like an overpopulation of cats. Um, so... S this son also gets off the mainland, or he goes to an isolated area that A has never seen a cat, and B has a terrible rodent infestation. Um, <laughs> these mice in this kingdom will dance on tables whether the ma whether um, the people are home or not. They don't. The mice aren't afraid of anything, and they can't. The humans can't do anything about the mice, and it's kind of annoying, you know. Um, so when this cat and they this and her uh, old master get to the uh, get to this kingdom, she goes after them and after all these mice and just kills so many and it's so incredible that the people are just like, whoa, new technology that can kill off rodents. This is gonna be awesome. We need to buy this. They rush into it without thinking, and I guess somehow in that fix they forget to he um they forget to be told that. And they aren't. They don't know that cats need water and uh, food and and uh, and drink and some other stuff. So the cat is set to work in the palace, and she does a really great job. It, uh, she catches the mice quickly, and rodent infestation goes way down. Um, now then, she she does get thirsty after a while, and she starts meowing. Well, as I mentioned before. No one knows how to take care of a cat. So they don't know what the heck she's doing, um, and her meowing is actually very threatening. <laughs> so eventually the um, people are actually in a panic about this ca uh, cat's meowing because some even run away screaming. Um, so eventually the king calls his uh, council together and they decide what, what are we going to do about this cat. Um, it either needs to go or we're going to use force to get this thing out, because we don't want it now. Um, <laughs> so they send a messenger uh, to the cat to ask uh, whether the cat, um, if the cat will leave peacefully. Um, well, of course, cats can only really say meow, meow. Um, and so the messenger interpreted this as, no, no, I'm not going to leave uh, peacefully. So the messenger goes back to the king and the council, and he, he said, yeah, she said she said no. Um, so they all decide, okay then, well we're gonna have to use some force. So they evacuate everyone from the castle, um, and they point all their cannons at the, uh, at the castle uh, in order to, uh, to blow it up, burn it down, and get this cat out of the palace. And they do this. They shoot all their cannons at the castle, and it burns to the ground. But not before the uh, cat jumps out a window, runs away, and thinks, Oh my gosh, I've had enough of these humans. Um, so yeah, the cat's cat ends up safe. Um, the kingdom ends up with a burnt cat, uh, destroyed palace, and a lot less money in their uh, bank account. Um... And you know what? They could have had a great technology, even though they didn't necessarily need it, since the, the rodents they could still live with. But still, though, you know, it it kind of sounds a little bit like today's whole thing with trends. Sometimes there are some kind of dumb trends that people buy into, and sometimes it might backfire hilariously. Sometimes it might backfire be uh, terribly, but. Just think about it though, aren't there, haven't there been times where there's like a new technology or something that sounds really good and then you get into it and you don't really understand it um, and then it just doesn't work out for you in the end? I don't know. That's, that's my take on the story. I do hope that you enjoyed. Um, 
please tell me what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear. Uh, what do you think th this story means? I don't know. There were probably literally a billion different um, ways that anyone could have interpreted the story. <sighs> anyway, I do hope that you enjoy. Um, I don't know. Be careful when rush it and be, be careful with the world, I guess, and just don't rush into things. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm going to say goodbye here. Wherever you are, uh, have a good day, have a good night. Anyway, bye!